What's going on, guys? Today, we are talking commercial real estate and whether it is the next banking crisis. And if you have spent any time on the internet, especially FinTwit today, you've probably seen some headlines declaring something crazy coming down the pipeline. Fortune here talks about Morgan Stanley analysts forecasting something worse than the GFC for commercial real estate. So today I want to get into the context for these conversations, what's going into them, and why it might be a problem. But I want to start with this tweet from Matthew Iglesias from last weekend, where he said, so all that bank stuff people were worried about seems to have turned out fine. I spent a lot of time on today's show, the full show, which will come out a little bit later, on this tweet and examining whether the bank stuff that people were worried about seems to have turned out fine. Now, what Matthew is, of course, referring to is the banking crisis that we had over the last month or so. And in short, that banking crisis was about the mismatch in duration of bonds or assets on banks' balance sheets with their liabilities, which are, of course, the depositors who wanted to get money out. Because of the increase in interest rates, banks were having to sell those long duration assets at a loss, which created a really vicious spiral where banks selling assets at a loss meant people lost confidence, meant people wanted to take their assets out, meant banks had to sell more assets at a loss, and so on and so forth. So that was a really big contributor to this whole Silicon Valley Valley, Silicon Valley Bank collapse. Now, the Fed obviously created a program, the Bank Term Funding Program, to accommodate that. Basically, that BTFP was designed so that instead of selling at a loss, banks could borrow against their held-to-maturity loans. Uh, and and that would hopefully stem the tide. Now, there is a lot of debate and interpretation around what's happened since. You have some commentator, some commentators like the Kobayashi letter who says, who are pointing out uh, the, the incredible outflows of deposits last month. Uh, the March saw the largest, biggest monthly outflow in history, $390 billion in deposits leaving, much bigger than any single monthly decline in 2008. This, of course, implies a real problem. Then on the other hand, you have folks like Robin Brooks here who says there is no deposit flight out of U.S. banks. And he gets into the specific numbers showing how there were initially deposit outflows, but that they've largely stopped. And of course... It was the small and regional banks that people were most worried about. When it wasn't clear if the FDIC would backstop all deposits in the small and regionals, the assumption was, or the fear was, that many people would just simply move their assets to the GSIPs, right? To the big banks that were too big to fail, to the globally systemically important banks, and thus leave the small and regional banks on a lurch. It hasn't seemed to happen yet, but that doesn't mean that we're out of the woods entirely. In fact, it might just mean that there is a different crisis that we need to be aware of. So Austin Campbell, who was on the show a couple weeks ago, makes exactly this point. He says that the actual biggest story of the week that we are ignoring is that regional bank prices, and I think he's talking about stock prices, are stabilizing and recovering, but fundamentals are deteriorating. He says that means the market is not prepared for the next crisis. Which brings us to what the next crisis might be. A couple weeks ago, I tweeted this. I said, within the next two weeks, everyone on Bank Twitter and VC Twitter and FinTwit is going to be talking about the huge volume of commercial real estate debt that was taken on during zero interest rate periods, but is maturing and will need to be refinanced at a high rate in a high rate shitty liquidity environment. Not to pat myself on the back, but that has definitely been what we're seeing now. And you have it coming from all over. So Raul Paul, a couple of weeks ago, writes, commercial real estate is a big ongoing problem for the non-systemically important banks. 50% of people haven't gone back to the office. And as leases come up for renewal, they will not be renewed, leaving a long tail of non-performing loans on the books of the regional banks. There are $2 trillion to loans in the, to the commercial real estate sector in smaller banks, according to the IMF. You have All In Talk, who are, saying, who are pointing this out as well. Smaller banks hold around $2.3 trillion in commercial real estate debt, which is almost 80% of commercial mortgages held by all banks. This year, 2023, 
We're seeing $270 billion in commercial mortgages set to expire, the highest figure on record. And if those loans are not paid off, they will have to, have to be refinanced. Of course, that refinancing is happening in a higher interest rate environment than the, than the loans were potentially made in, and in the context of a fundamental change in the commercial real estate landscape, given that people just aren't coming back to offices. Now, Joe Consorti, who works with uh, the Bitcoin layer, uh, has gone in depth around some of these issues. He points out that banks take in deposits and lend to property developers that show the promise of generating return on capital. As banks lose deposits, their ability to fund real estate fails, and small banks just had the largest week of deposit outflows since 2007. CRE is projected to decline by as much as 40% this year, meaning banks have already begun reducing their lending. And unfortunately, as Joe points out, commercial real estate loan exposure is concentrated specifically in small and mid-sized banks. The exact same banks, he points out, that were already experiencing depositor flight after Silicon Valley Bank. Now, on top of all of that, you have the just larger megatrends. Joe made this graphic in the Bloomberg terminal that shows U.S. metro space office vacancy as a percentage. It's the highest level ever, 18.7%. No rent is being paid on roughly a fifth of all U.S. office space. The question then is, of course, how are commercial lenders going to make their money back if people aren't going to renew those loans? Joe goes in depth uh, on this. It's really, really good. He says $317 billion in CRE debt is maturing through the end of 2024, and the defaults are already happening. Of the $162 billion commercial real estate that matures in 2023, $35 billion is already past due. There are $2.95 trillion of CRE debt outstanding for the $20 trillion commercial real estate market. Forced selling could cause serious impairment. This is the landscape of CRE, really well articulated. And the conversation has moved from these folks who live on FinTwit and who are in the crypto space like Joe into the larger discussion. So you've got Zero Hedge talking about CRE contagion pathways. You've got billionaires like Leon Cooperman talking about why commercial real estate might be the next sector to be hit by the bank turmoil. He talks about the changing lending standards that are going to come and how it makes him cautious about the entire economy. Now, it's not just commercial lenders, right? It's not just the banks themselves. The commercial real estate system is interwoven with other parts of the economy. Boaz Weinstein talks about how it's in the con uh, so this is a problem in the context of life insurers, writing the fundamental rationale is CRE and financials exposure, even if they don't have the hold to maturity issues of the banks. So in other words, these life insurance companies have a big part of their asset portfolio in this commercial real estate, which could cause them to have problems as well. That brings us back to this great big Morgan Stanley piece. Morgan Stanley is predicting apparently a 40% drop in CRE values from peak to trough, given all of these vacancies and given the rollover debt into higher interest rates. They say that $2.9 trillion are going to be renegotiated and rolled over in the next two years, the next 24 months. And this is the source of what people are worried about. Now, so that we don't have just a totally pessimistic, gloomy view, because it's very easy to get caught in that, especially in crypto Twitter and financial Twitter, there are some folks who are, if not concerned, or if not not concerned, at least more balanced in their perspective. Uh, Guy Labas says, I'm not sure who needs to hear this, but CRE loans at small and mid-sized banks are mostly not commercial real estate. They are business loans collateralized by real estate for banks' capital reasons. Does that change your Doomer opinion? It probably should. Unless you think that every other doctor's office, bakery, and low-rise office building is suddenly going to go out of business and stop paying their debt service, then by all means panic. I think it's an important conversation to have, even if we don't go fully into the doomerist point of view. And I also think that we've learned over and over again that it doesn't have to be a complete uh, systemic extinction event for wobbles in the system to cause big knock-on effects. So while I sympathize with Guy trying to calm people down, and I think that we should take as much as possible a dispassionate view towards these things, I think that it is an issue that is worth keeping an eye on and trying to understand the new dynamics 
effects of. We continue to figure out how to adapt to a post-COVID, post-ZERP world, and there are lots and lots of troubles ahead as we make that adaptation. Anyways, guys, we're going to be talking, I'm sure, more about commercial real estate in the weeks and months to come, but that is the look from here. I do a full version of this show getting much more in-depth a little bit later, and uh, I appreciate you listening. Cheers.